Love Truth presents the Parent and Family Resource. This presentation is titled A Basic Experiment Process. In this presentation, Aloisa outlines a basic process to conduct experiments. This includes being open to possibilities, growing faith, being truthful, humble, taking action and measuring the results in order to grow faith in the process and or modify and repeat. Recorded on the 24th of June 2021 from 9am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello and welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. I'm Eloisa. This presentation outlines the steps you can take if you are going to be engaging experiments. So the experiment process, if you like, in a pretty simplified form, is firstly being open to possibilities. If you're not open to the possibility of something, then you're not going to probably even experiment with it. You probably won't even think about it, and you probably won't do anything about it. So being open to possibilities is the first step. Then basically there's sort of a, a, a step, I suppose, that you end up going through. There's truth. Then there's emotion, action, faith, and then a relationship with God. I'm talking in very simplified terms of this process because there's other things that come in and you'll find. But I wanted to outline how it's a very simple process and it's not a hard one to engage because I keep, I keep saying you could experiment with this or I encourage you to experiment or have a go and things like that and you might be going, well, where do I start and how do I do that? So firstly, it's about being open to possibilities or having a desire for something new or, or do it. So you may have heard something in one of these presentations and gone, oh, I'd quite like to do that, you know, or you've had a thought that you might like to do it. So being open, to, there might be the possibility of like, oh yeah, there's a possibility that might be, um, might be true. Yeah, being open to some possibilities. So you may have heard something in this, like a, a truth in this. So feeling emotion is loving or feeling, you know, expressing my emotion is a loving thing to do and is going to help the children. Now you've got to be open firstly to the possibility that maybe that's a possibility. Otherwise you won't try it. Maybe that could be true then you'll have more of an incentive to actually look at it. So they've heard a bit of a, a truth about it. Then there's emotion or humility, you could say. Uh, remember in the definitions, humility is, is feeling and experiencing any emotion, whether painful or pleasurable, that you have and letting yourself experience and feel, feel that. We've talked about having possibility and then hearing some truth. So the truth that we're, as an example, we're taking is Emotion is a loving act and feeling my emotions will help me to come to know more truth. So then you need to be humble and feel about that. So be honest about the truth about how do I feel about that right now. In previous videos, I've talked about how we need to start with where we're at. So we need to find out, well, what are my beliefs about emotion? How do I feel about that? And then emotionally or being humble to, wow, I feel this and then feeling it. Identify the beliefs you have, identify the corrupt faith you have, to identify what your real feelings about yourself and others feeling emotion and expressing and releasing emotion are. And then feel through that. That would be you being humble. Take some action. If you're in your relationship or have children or even just on your own, you may even just have pets or even or, or job or work or whatever. When there's a feeling then let yourself be emotion. You need to take some action, so design some experiments for yourself of how you're going to actually experience your emotion if you're shutting it down, so that you can have some emotional experiences um, by being humble and, and telling yourself the truth. And when the children in your care are behaving in a certain way that you, makes you feel a certain way, just stop what you're doing, take yourself to somewhere so you can self-responsibly feel it. If there's something that happens every day, so maybe it's every day when you go to have a, to bathe the, the children, it's bath time, they always are running away and they don't want to go have a bath. And you feel frustrated by this every time. Or that you're potty training them and every time that they go to the loo, they, you know, they're sitting there for half an hour or for two hours and they don't get off the loo. Or they're doing you know, a little poo and then they need to do another one. Or they're doing little poos all over your house, whatever it might be. Uh, maybe it's that your children are more grown up, but they do nothing around the house and you're continuously cleaning up after them. Now, it could be the same for a partner on that one or whatever it is. You know, it could be the dog you, you, you're cleaning up after. And how do you really feel about that? 
set yourself up so when it happens the next time, so take the instance of bath time, bath time happens tonight, the kids are running around madly and you're chasing after them and trying to get them in that bath and you want to get it so that you can get some time to yourself, whatever. Instead, what if you just stop? So make, it just, make sure your kids are, are safe. Go in the sense of maybe shut the bathroom door so they can't get in if you've already run the bath. Go into your room, sit down and feel what you feel. That's taking some action and being humble to what has come up by this, this interaction. Now if you feel through that and you genuinely feel what you feel, then see what happens and measure the results. See what happens with the child. See how you feel in, re in response to the child. Now you might need to do this a number of times. You might need to do it over weeks and months and just let yourself feel. And depending how humble you are, which means depending how open you are to just releasing and experiencing the feelings you have that you have come up, will depend how long it takes. What's lovely about God's way is that it depends on you. And if you're really humble, and the more humble you can be and the more faith that you have in truth and God's love and the more action you take in harmony with love and truth, then the faster the results happen. It's not a magic thing. It doesn't happen overnight. It generally happens over a process of time. Uh, but you do see instant results. And sometimes they're very small, but they are there. So this, we've talked about this process. You've, done, you've had the possibility. You've heard something here. You're taking the truth. Okay, emotion is good and emotion is going to actually improve my life. Okay, then you've been humble, so that's, um, uh, that's the emotional part. So you're humble, you've actually gone and you've felt some of your emotion. You took some action, which was going and feeling the emotion. Then over a time, and when you measure the results, your faith will grow because you'll see the positive results of feeling your emotion. Now sometimes when you first start feeling emotion, sometimes a lot more things start happening in your life and it seems like it's worse. It's not necessarily worse, it's just that all those things were happening, but now that you're more humble and you're more open to feeling and experiencing what's happening in your life, things are become more transparent and you see more. It was always there. It's not suddenly more. It's just that you are now actually more sensitive to seeing it. This is a good thing. This is a very good thing. And if you just stick with it, keep feeling whatever comes up in your life, just keep feeling, be humble, be humble, be humble. And then measure the results, one, of how you feel internally, and two, about what starts happening in your relationships. And over a period of time, if you sincerely engage this process and you work through it, your life does improve. The people I know who have sincerely engaged God's God's way and the divine truth, principles of divine truth in their lives have all ended up having a better life. Their lives are smoother, more enjoyable, they're happier, they are more like they have a better sense of themselves. Everything has ended up and they have a lot more faith uh, that it's a good thing. Those who have not sincerely engaged it and who have not genuinely and sincerely worked through their emotions, a lot of them ha feel quite dissatisfied and unhappy and that somehow there's something wrong with God's way and with the actual truth of the matter. No, there's not. It's about you and them not actually dealing sincerely with, the, usually around emotions actually. That seems to be the sticking point for most people. So with this, the process of experiment, it's you're going, you've had possibility, then you've got some truth or the idea and you've gone, all right, maybe that truth is possible. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. So your desire's been activated to a degree. Then you've been humble, and that's feeling your emotion. Then you've taken some action, done some experiments, and actually felt emotion. Measure the results. Your faith will grow by seeing the positive results that, that occur. Over a period of time, you may also then want to investigate a relationship with God. And that way, you can then get to truth directly from God and understand um, what, it, you know, what God's way actually is all about and receive truth directly from your creator and your true parent God. That's uh, again, you can engage the same process that you did for the experiment, say around at bath time that we were, we were looking at. And the possibility that a relationship with God is possible. And that, that truth is we can have a relationship with God and God wants a relationship with, with us and God can give us love. All right, well then are we gonna be humble to the process, take some action, maybe we formulate an experiment where you long for God's love, have a longing or a prayer for God's love, be humble to the response and be humble to what happens.
depending what happens, it may, then you can have some faith uh, if, if you gain a result. If you don't, just know that's a feedback system and to refine your longing and your desire to receive that love. And that applies for any experiment you do. If there's no results or results exactly the same or you're not doing it, well, something in you hasn't then obviously changed yet. It always comes back to us in the end when we're engaging this process. And we're the ones who can create positive change in our own lives. We're the ones as the parents who influence the children. We're the ones who the children are reflecting. There's many, many, many ways every day, every moment, if you have children or a child, that you can learn about love and you can grow and develop your soul-based qualities and um, actually become a more emotional, more loving, truthful being. And that is a choice that you can make. So this experiment process that um, we're just briefly discussing now, another example could be if you had a longing for your soulmate to have a partner. So if you're not in a relationship or as a child, if you're growing up and you're a teenager and you're starting to be interested in in a, having a relationship with someone, an intimate relationship. You could also use the same process as an experiment or a discovery process for your soulmate. You need to be open to possibilities. You need to be open to possibilities that you might be wrong and that there's other possibilities possible than what you may have experienced in your life or that your parents may have educated you about or that the world is saying is right. So on soulmates might be a whole new concept for you that there's only one other person in the whole world that is the same expression of your soul and there's not there's not multiple partners it's just one person now if that's what you you know you you'd have to be open to the possibility that that is possible and work through any emotions emotionally that are out of harmony with that if you don't see that as a possibility you won't even consider it then the second step, you need to have some faith in that. So the faith that this is a possibility, a faith that, in, that God's way of love is the best way of love because God's created this. And if you don't have faith that God's way of love is the best, then you won't have faith that having a soulmate is really going to be the thing that's going to make you the happiest. You need to have faith that truth works before you'll engage this process. If you don't have any faith that truth's going to work, you won't do it. Then you need to have humility being willing to feel your emotions and everything that has it. And there'll be all kinds of emotion that comes up. You know, you may have emotions that your soulmate may not love you. You may not be connected to your soulmate. They may not want you. You might not, they might not be open to you. But you need to have, that be humble to feeling whatever you feel and whatever comes up as you explore and take actions to, to refine your own soul in order that you recognize your soulmate. Truth, you need to have a strong faith in truth, that truth is actually the best thing, that it will work in the long term, that in the long term that your partner will also seek the truth and that truth will pull you, you know, bring you together. So having a, a faith and trust in truth is very important. And then having faith in love itself, having faith that love will draw you together and having faith in the principles of love and having faith in the fact that soulmate love is possible. So the process to experiment is to be open to the possibilities and be open to the possibility that you're wrong. Particularly with children as a parent, we often want to be right or to be experts in our own life, but often we're not. And we think we are, but we, it's just really a, a false belief we have about ourselves or we want to have an inflated sense of our own importance. or There might be all kinds of reasons that we have for it. But we need to be open to possibilities that we are wrong and that what we're feeling even and what we believe and what's happening in our life, it might not be loving from God's perspective or it might be different to what we are um, thinking or perceiving it to be. So we need to be open to possibilities. Then we need to have truth and a love of truth, a real strong heartfelt love of truth. And if you have a strong heartfelt desire and passion for truth and finding truth, this will pull you through so many areas of your life. And also, you'll become more interested in finding the truth rather than in getting what you want or your addictions met. The truth will begin to work on you in a way, if you love it that much, that you'll want to know what's really happening and what's the dynamic in your family and how are you truly treating the children and what is the truth about emotion and what is the truth about love and what is the truth about the relationship that you have with your partner and what is the truth about you and what's happened to you? And what's the truth about how you treat other people and how you let other people treat you? So truth is something, a very important quality to 
develop and something to come to love with your whole heart. For me, truth just pulls me through so many things, that desire, even when I have resistances, eventually I get to the point of, well, okay, what is the real truth here? Why am I so resistive? <laughs> Resistance being a, an opposition to wanting to know what the truth is or what love is. Then humility, being humble to what is happening. Being prepared to feel all the emotions you have and express those and release them. And then having faith. Faith in, like, can grow by your experiences, but also having faith in truth. Having faith that truth is a good thing and that it's going to um, bring about good results in the long term. And that having faith that truth is the best way and that's going to bring you close and connected relationships. Because in the beginning, it might seem like it's causing all kinds of conflict and all these other things that you find challenging. But if you're humble and you feel through those, you will see the benefits of, of what truth can do in a relationship and how, how like there can't be closeness and connection if it's not based on truth. Because it's lies and deceit and it keeps you apart from each other if you're not truthful and transparent. It's also having faith in love, having faith in principles of love, having faith in principles of truth having faith that love itself is a good thing, having faith that love is going to bring you happiness and that love is something that you can have and that is a good thing. So faith is a very important quality to develop and part of um, any experimental process that you do. Measuring what has happened will grow your faith, but at the beginning you're just going to need to trust and have faith that truth is good and that love is good and that good things will happen if you're more loving and truthful. So the basis of conducting any experiment in the parent and family resource is to be open to possibilities, then uh, seek truth and have faith that that truth is good. And you may have heard a truth and you might take that and experiment with it. Be humble to all of the emotions, that's the emotion part. Take some actions and then have some faith, have some faith in love, have some faith in God's process, uh, have some faith in the process that God has got all set up and designed for you, which is the simplest, easiest, smoothest way to learn about love and truth if you so desire. But that's based on your heartfelt desire to do so. Go well with any experiments that you choose to engage. I'll see you next time.